karam kat 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 karam kat mom sabok my name is Taj Müller. I've been involved in the climate justice movement for a few years and I work with a network called Climate Justice Action and we organized big manifestations and actions at the climate summit in Copenhagen in 2009. The point about the climate justice struggle is that coming from the global north, I live in Berlin, I'm, I'm from Germany, we've often seen social and ecological struggles as separate. The ecologists have dealt with, with climate issues and the radical leftists, the socialists, the social democrats have dealt with social issues. But the point about climate change is that it's not about saving polar bears or saving trees. Although saving polar bears and trees is important, climate justice isn't just an ecological crisis, it's a social and an ecological crisis together. And the insidious thing about it is that those who have contributed least to climate change are the ones who suffer most from it. Indigenous people in Bolivia who have done nothing to cause climate change are now suffering from the fact that the glaciers in La Paz are melting, which means that they have no water. In, folks in Mexico are being evicted from their lands so we can build wind farms there, so we can plant eucalyptus plantations. But they've done nothing to cause climate change. It's been the historical polluters in the global north that have caused climate change, but we have enough money not to suffer from it. So the point about climate justice is that in order to fight climate change, we need to deal with the social and the ecological issues together. We need to have drastic emissions reductions, but achieved in a just way. The Global North needs to reduce its emissions from a 1990 baseline by 50% by 2020. Otherwise, things are going to increasingly be too late. We can already see this year and last year the enormous explosion of extreme weather events, of hurricanes. Some people even blame earthquakes in China that happened last year on the fact that they've been building dams and that the dams, these enormous bodies of water, have been putting pressure on tectonic plates. I can use many more examples, but we can see that the climate-related disasters always affect the poorest and the weakest most. So that's the central point about climate justice, because we live in a world of climate injustice. What we've been talking about here at the forum is how, as social movements around the world, do we coordinate our struggles. There's many local struggles, folks in the United States, folks in Nigeria and South Africa, in Brazil, in Mexico and Indonesia, fighting against extractive industries, against coal, against oil, also against the extraction of uranium, against nuclear power. And on the other hand, we've had these big summit mobilizations to Copenhagen, to Cancun. These have been very, very powerful, but the challenge really is to bring them together. So that's what we've been talking about here. How do you connect and globalize the local struggles against the production of the madness to the global struggles that happen at the summits, which are about the management of the madness. So what we've been talking about here is that we are going to fo that we are going to have big mobilization towards the climate summit in Durban, which is going to happen at the end of this year. But we need to do more than just have another summit protest. I come from the summit protest movement, just like Attac is a creation or is, 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 is a key actor in that movement. But we all know that we need to be, go beyond these summits. So people have been talking here about having days of action, coordinated days of action against the fossil fuel industry. Because we need to, for example, start leaving fossil fuels in the ground. We have to stop burning them. So this kind of connection, having a big summit protest in Durban, but also taking direct action against the fossil fuel industry and the nuclear industry has been a key element of our strategizing. Another, let's say two key elements have been on the one hand the payment of climate debt. One aspect of climate justice is that we in the global north need to understand that we have used the world's resources, we have exploited the world's resources to create this enormous, enormous wealth. Of course our ability to consume in many ways has been a source of happiness and joy for us. But the problem is, it's been a source of death and destruction everywhere around the world. So that means we have taken too much global environmental space and we have left nobody else the space to develop and grow. So we need to talk about how our economies in the global north, especially in a material way, can shrink. In French I'd say décroissance or, or, or degrowth. But at the same time, folks in the global south need to still develop. There, there needs to be more, you know, people in India, in Bolivia, need to actually have ability, the ability to consume more also on a material level. And the only way, the only way that can work in a global and just way is if the global north 
redistributes resources. If we basically say, okay, a lot of our wealth has been unjustly accumulated and we need to share it again, we need to redistribute it. And it's, in many ways, we've always said the South owes a, a debt to the global North in terms of finances, but really it is the global North that owes a debt to the global South. So we need to start making reparations, we need to make up for our historical guilt. And the third issue has been to focus on the Rio Plus 20 Summit. 20 years ago, in 1992, there was a summit in Rio called the Earth Summit. That's where they, the governments, the big corporations, and some of the bigger environmental organizations talked about the sustainability agenda. How do you make capitalist growth sustainable? The thing is that capitalist growth is inherently unsustainable. It is ultimately the fact that we have an economy that needs to grow to survive that puts us up against the limits of the planet. You cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet, but capital needs. It is, in a way, infinite growth. So, 20 years ago, they talked about how to make capitalism sustainable. 20 years from, now, from then, we see everything has gotten worse. There has been more loss of biodiversity, species extinction. There's been more climate change, more desertification, more crises of access to water, the food price crisis which contributed to the Tunisian and Egyptian revolts. All these are connected to capitalism's insane need for growth. So what they're now going to try, 20 years later, is they're going to try and talk about a green economy. They will say, okay, yes, we will transform our economies, but we will continue to organize them as capitalist growth economies. And what we're going to say in Rio in April or May of next year is you cannot have sustainable capitalism. What we need is system change, not climate change.